morning to Prince of Peace Lutheran Church. We're very happy to have you here with us. Thank you for coming. Please rise as you are comfortable. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins in the presence of God and one another. Gracious God, have mercy upon us. We confess that we have turned from you and have given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin, and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Christ, you are forgiven. Please join in singing our gathering hymn.
breathe to come up or not? Okay, <laughs> that's fine. Uh, I'm going to tell you what the children's sermon was anyway, although I'm not going to ask my assistant to take off his shoe. Uh, I ha if you have a shoe that has a tongue in it, you know that sometimes those tongues can get you into deep trouble because they'll fold over, your foot won't go in, and there you will have a very sore foot if you walk on that. I looked at us, and most of us have on sandals or tennis shoes or something else that doesn't have some sort of slip on. But you know, we often get in trouble with the tongues that are in our shoes and the tongues that are in our heads. And the tongues that got wagging in the first lesson are the people from Israel. They murmured, they murmured, they murmured. They were murmuring against God. They were murmuring against Moses and about everything else that was happening. And I don't know if any of you have just sat around and murmured. You sort of have said, well, I don't like what that was about doing. I don't know why she even came today. Her face isn't on right. Or anything else that ends up kind of undermining the community of God. And that's what this group was doing. They didn't take their and feel good. Thank you. So our next is, if you're comfortable, please stand. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the community of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O oh God, eternal goodness, immeasurable love, you place your gifts before us, and we eat and are satisfied. We fill us with this world in all the need, with the life that comes only from you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. Good morning. Good morning. The first reading is from Exodus chapter 16. 
the whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, if only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread, for you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way I will test them whether they will follow my instruction or not. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked toward the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening, quails came up and covered the camp. And in the morning, there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine, flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. Word of God, word of life. The psalm is Psalm 78. We'll read it responsively. So God commanded the clouds above and opened the doors of heaven. So mortals ate the bread of angels. God provided for them food enough. raining down flesh upon them like dust and flying birds like the sand of the seas. So the people ate and were well filled, for God gave them what they craved. The second reading is from Ephesians chapter 4. I, therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, it is said, when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive. He gave gifts to his people. When it says he ascended, what does it mean but that he had also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is the same one who ascended far above all the heavens, so that he might fill all things. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children, tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness and deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. Word of God, word of life.
The Gospel is found in John 6, 24 through 35. Glory to you, O Lord. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were beside the sea, they themselves got into boats and went to Capernaum to look for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Verily, truly, I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, what must we do to perform the works of God? And Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, What signs are you going to give us then that we may see it and believe in you? And the works, what works are you going to perform? Our ancestors ate manna in the wilderness. It is written, He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hunger, hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. The Gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. You might not like to know that when I come to prepare and work with you on a sermon, I use resources, and one of the ones that I depended on this time, especially for the quote from Luther, is called Sermon Writer. You can find it online, and it's just great to read what somebody else might say about the lesson that's going on. But today, let us begin by lifting our hearts in prayer. O bread of life, O light of the world, O the sheep's door, O the door, O the good shepherd, O the resurrection and the life, O the truth, the way and the life, O the true vine from heaven together with the Father and the Spirit, be with us today as we consider your words for our life. Amen. All of these I am statements in John, beginning with I am the bread of life, John is trying to expand our ideas about what Jesus is. We can hardly imagine what that is, but I am's are in a lot of them within this particularly uh, particular book. And one of the very first I am's was when one of the people in the desert when she was by herself, I think her name was Tabor, said, who are you? And he said, I am. Well, that wasn't very helpful, but in fact, I am is who we're talking about. We can hardly imagine what that means, but you probably noticed that last, the last few weeks, I think about five of them, have focused on miracles of feeding people. Times in the Old Testament, and times in the New Testament have been mentioned for these weeks. Even in today's lessons, the readings for this week refer to Moses feeding people of Israel while they were in the desert. The psalm mentions that also. The gospel reading that we had today follows feeding 5,000. We feed people, guests, the best that we have. We'll join together following this service to eat and have some fellowship. And we often say that our congregation will feed people. And that's excellent. And there's nothing wrong with that. But if we look closer, is there another point? Is there some other kind of food that we might be looking for? Let's look at the questions that the crowd ask. Rabbi, when did you come here? Well, it really doesn't matter. He got there. They're not necessarily sure. But Jesus didn't go on the boat. They knew that. They hitched up with some boats that were coming around, or they walked back around the sea to see if they could find him, and they did find him. So his, their question, how did you get here, probably was more about transportation information. He got there in front of them. They hadn't seen him go. He wasn't in the boat that left early. How did he get there? I don't expect that they thought that Jesus would say, well, you know, I just walked across the water, although that is what he did. They were looking 
for other kinds of transportation hints. He didn't answer that question. He pointed out that they were there because they had filled their bellies. He's not saying that physical needs are not important. In much of his ministry, he healed people and he fed them. But he asked this crowd to work for the food that endures for eternal life that God the Father will give them. This is what he is trying to say to them and then again to us. We probably also ask, what must we do to perform the works of God? I'm sure that we're asking for a clear path through laws, moral ideas of today. And somehow we feel confident that if we knew what we should do, we could surely do it. Well, I know that I have a set of rules for taking the diet. I have a set of rules for cleaning my teeth. I have a set of rules for trying to become more fit and to read the Bible. And I work at those things, but I often fail. So when Christ says, this is the work of God, that you believe in him who he has sent, we're not exactly sure what that means, but Jesus invites the crowd to believe in him, and he provided one way. Not, I don't think there were 629 or more laws that the Jewish people thought they had to work at to become saved. One thing. Believe in he who God has sent. Wow, maybe. I doubt that this is any easier. And we, like the crowd, probably want to ask the same thing. How can we know that you are the Son of God? They happen to ask, what signs are you going to give us then so we see and believe in you? What work are you performing? Peoples ask for signs all the time. It might seem terribly myopic given that Jesus just fed 5,000 people, or maybe actually 10 to 20 if they counted the children and women, which they didn't. They only had a few loaves and fishes, and he fed them all. They remembered Jesus' miracle. He, Jesus fed a few thousand on one occasion. Moses had fed all of the people of Israel for 40 years. So maybe they're raising the bar for Jesus. If you fed us once, keep going. We kind of like this being taken care of. But Jesus says, remember, I am the bread of God from heaven. And Jesus pointed out also that Moses did not feed them in, the, in that God did. We suffer often from spiritual myopia and don't even think of the wonderful things that happen in our presence every day. We fail to see them. We take them for granted. And here's what Martin Luther had observed, and we can also observe. God's wonderful works, which happen daily, are lightly esteemed, not because they are of no import, but because they happen so constantly without interruption. Man is used to the miracle that God rules the world and upholds all creation. And because things daily run their appointed course, it seems insignificant that the sun comes up in the morning. And no man thinks it worth his while to meditate upon it and to regard God's work as wonderful. Yet it is a great wonder, much greater than that Christ fed 5,000 with five loaves or that he made wine from water. God feeds billions daily, but often we only take notice if we happen to miss a meal or when the feeding takes place under dramatic circumstances. We too say, Give us a sign, Jesus. Do something spectacular so we can believe in you. I had a friend who would look at the wall in the back and say, if I could only see the handwriting on the wall. I thought, no, I don't think I want that. Sometimes we even go to very trivial things. Oh, God, find me a parking spot. And things like that that really are very trivial, but... It's part of our life, and we need to expand our thoughts about what Jesus is or what he can do as the light of the world. They look for signs, we look for signs, and some signs are important. Sometimes we just totally miss them. Oftentimes you run out to see the bow in the sky. But do we think of the bread and the wine? Do we think of the incarnation, the resurrection? 
or the community, our community. Even with our stomachs fill, full, we can be hungry. And this, I think, is the bread from heaven that Jesus is offering, a bread that can fill our loneliness, our isolation, our entitledness beyond what things that we have just simply to eat, a food for our soul, a place to belong. When my husband Jim died, many asked, oh, what can we do? But I really had no answer for them. And then two people came and lived with me for the week. They did nothing, but they actually did the most. The assurance that I was not alone and that I was loved really, really helped. We need to be that community for the world or for the county or maybe for the neighborhood somehow so that they are not alone. Luther said that we should be little Christs to each other. So that's kind of a challenge. Be there for someone. Do something ordinary for someone. I heard someone talk about sending flowers to someone. Wonderful. Something that you're not expecting. Something even as simple as saying to a child as they're in the grocery store, wow, I really like the way you're helping your mom. The kid will be surprised and the mother will be happy. And so you have then made somebody else feel blessed by your words and by God. Sometimes it's simply accepting a compliment with grace rather than saying, oh, really, this old thing? Just say thank you. Let us be able to accept that many times people are with us and they're giving us that companionship here in the congregation or at the fellowship later or in the world in general. Be the community of God. Be a blessing. Be a smile. Like the crowd, we can ask, Lord, or give us this bread always. Give us this bread always. And once you have it, you, it's your duty to figure out how to share it. The bread of life that gives eternal life was given to the world, not just Israel. It, notice that the word is that God gives the bread of life. Not that he gave it, because this is still going on, and you now are the blessing to go on to figure out how to pass this on. In response to their request, which back away said, Oh, Lord, give us this bread. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. I don't know what you're going to do with that. It certainly isn't an easy thing any more than I am the way, the life, and all those other I am's that he had. But the mighty I am is with us here today, and he will be with you as your life goes forth. Figure a way to share that. So let us pray. O oh, Yahweh, help us to understand that the mystery of this bread of life is just that, a mystery that we cannot truly explain and do not need to. Guide us in our belief and unbelief that we may have faith in this gift that it will lead to eternal life. Help us to be the community that will provide space for those with great faith and for those with just a flash of the possibility of faith. Sustain us in these times and give us peace. Amen. We'll sing the hymn of the day, which is 485, I am the bread of life.
Please stand as we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in one God, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rooted in Christ and sustained by the Spirit, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all of creation. You call your church to be the body of Christ. Awaken all the baptized to the gifts you provide for carrying out the work of ministry. Where the church is divided, knit us together and restore the unity of the faith. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You command the clouds above and cause the wind to blow in the heavens. Watch over deserts and wilderness places. Regenerate rainforests. Defend species at risk of extinction. And strengthen the work of conservation organizations. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You summon leaders to respond to the needs of your people. Instill those who govern with patience when confronted with grievances and perseverance in seeking what promotes the well-being of the community. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You draw near to those who cry out for help. Feed those who are hungry. Reassure those who are despairing and accompany those who are imprisoned. We pray for all those who are sick or struggling, especially Tina Gutsman, Rena Ruhinen, Ellen Talbaca, Kelly Hendrickson, Alex, Bev Goodell, Steve Lang, Bob and Nancy Ranta, Harper Curtis, Bob Ball, Darwin Britton, Dan Burton, Emily, and Diana. Other names may be offered either silently or aloud. Matthew Jeanette, my sister. Rain down the true bread from heaven that gives life to the world. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You receive all who come seeking a sign of grace. Make this congregation a place of hospitality for those accustomed to rejection. To those who have felt excluded here or elsewhere, prepare us to welcome them in the name of Christ. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You provide food that endures for eternal life. Sustain us each day with the bread of life until we are gathered with all the saints and feast together at your heavenly banquet. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We lift these and all our prayers to you, O oh God, confident in the promise of your saving love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Extend your greetings of peace to one another.
as the offering is being taken, we can sing the offering hymn freely, freely. Stand for the offering prayer. Blessed are you, O oh God, ruler. Now let us pray as the Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom.
So at this time, it's time to note the things that are coming in the coming week, so that you may put them on your calendar and participate in community here. But now receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And the Lord grant you peace. Amen. You are the body of Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen.